The Baltimore Ravens preseason is just one day away. We talk about players to watch in the preseason. Roquan Smith and more, the very special guest, next year on Locked On Ravens. You are Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we are back. Another episode here of Locked On Ravens. I'm your host, as always, Kevin Ostreicher of Ravens. Why we're here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for making us here your first listen of the day on Locked On Ravens. We're free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. And here with us today to dive into some preseason talk, some Roquan Smith <laughs> returning as intro hype man number one. It is Ingraven. It's Ingraven. It's been a while. I'm excited to talk to you. Football's back, man. We've made it. We're one day away. How you doing? Ooh, I'm good. I'm, I'm really good. Like we were just talking about uh, off air. It just it, it flew by. It, it went by so fast, man. And we're here already. It's literally going to be a game on uh, the Ravens game on this week, tomorrow. And it's uh, that's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm grateful that we're here. And that stuff is really about to pick up. Yeah, it almost feels like it has taken so long, but also has taken no time at all. It kind of feels mm-hmm. like right if, right at the end of both sides of that spectrum there. But Engraven, there was a very busy Monday, <laughs> and yeah. we had a lot of news yeah. drop on Monday. J.K. Mm-hmm. Dobbins coming back, Justin Tucker yes. being extended, mm-hmm. Tyra Linderbaum injury updates mm-hmm. galore from NFL yeah. and John Arbaugh. But let's start with J.K. Dobbins first here. I mean, this is a player that has obviously been working so hard to get back on the field. What was your excitement level knowing that, you know, he was talking to Ian Rappaport saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to be ready for week one. And then here he is on the field before the first preseason game, his first practice coming on Monday. It's a beautiful thing to see. Um, and I just, I'm glad that he's back. We're all glad that he's back. Uh, and with J.K. Dobbins, we, in his rookie year, we saw the flashes. We saw the potential. I think he got almost 900 yards. Um, and he didn't, he wasn't even a starter. Like, they were sharing the carries between him and Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards. Um, and then later on in the season, it was just mainly uh, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. But um last year he was slated to be more of the feature back of course Gus was still going to get his too but then when they both went out and Justice Hill too it's like man come on now like y'all they usually you lose one guy and all right we got a backup but you lost the backup and the backup's backup so it's like come on now but um it's just nice to see that both him and Justice Hill return too um, and, and we'll we'll wait for Gus Edwards. I think it'll be a long time for him, but we'll see. But with J.K. Dobbins specifically, I'm just um just ready to see him take over, ready to see him be more involved in the passing game as a uh, legitimate option. I know last year, uh, Devontae Freeman, uh, and he got better as the season went along, and I was actually surprised that they didn't bring him back. I, I really thought that they were going to, even if it was just for training camp. Um, and... Le'Veon Bell for a tiny bit of time and that he was with the Ravens. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Murray, Latavius Murray. Um, it Having them was cool, but it was just different because they didn't have that, that chemistry, that rapport with Lamar Jackson like a J.K. Dobbins would have. So now to have him back in the backfield, um, it'll do wonders for this team. Uh, and it, it can just help take them to another level on offense. Yeah, and I think a very underrated aspect in Graven of just what went on last year was the fact that they lost these three guys like 10 days before the season started. And mm-hmm. they had to, again, bring in these veterans and they had to learn an entirely new offense. Right. They had to learn the mesh point with Lamar Jackson. And it was mm-hmm. just a learning process where for guys this offseason, you know, they bring in Mike Davis and Corey Clement and Tyler Beatty. They have the offseason. They have the preseason, which I think is going to be great. And so for Dobbins to be able to work his way back now, kind of take it a day at a time, add more and more onto his plate, it's going to be great. And I think, you know, there is optimism here that he's going to be ready for week one against the Jets, which is great. But Mm -hmm. speaking of a player that's done so many good things for this organization, Engraven, Justin Tucker earns Mm. a very well-deserved extension, four-year deal, keeping him in Baltimore through 2027. I mean, Mm -hmm. was this something you were expecting? When when you're talking about extensions, obviously the number one thing is Lamar Jackson. It's Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson. But did you think a Tucker extension here was on the horizon. You know what? I didn't even realize that he was in the last year of his deal. Uh, so I was like completely shocked by the news. But when you realize who Justin Tucker is and you know who Justin Tucker is and everything that he's done for this Ravens team, then you, you're not shocked anymore. Um, Justin Tucker uh, deserves to be the highest paid kicker 
and some. The Ravens have um, he, he's had just he's been so reliable for the Ravens. And it's like, even though it hurts when it does happen, the fact that it rarely does happen uh, is is a gift because uh, when it, when he misses, it hurts. Um, but it's just like it's it's almost like it's shocking when he misses uh, because he just he has been so clutch and so reliable and so accurate. Like I, I remember the uh, the Saints game 2018 <laughs> after Joe Flacco threw the touchdown uh, to John Brown. All right, Ravens are down by one. All right, Justin Tucker he'll go out there and kick the extra point. Let's head to overtime, baby. MT Bank Stank, MT Bank Stadium is rocking. Everybody hype. All right, let's go. We're coming back. And Justin Tucker lines up. Oh yeah. Point after the touchdown, let's go. And he missed it. And we were like, wow. That it, it, it was so painful because it's just something that just does not happen like that. Then even um a couple of years ago in the playoffs, the Bills, and, and it was windy, but at the same time, it's still Justin Tucker. So when Justin Tucker missed the first one, it was like, oh, okay, all right. It's, it's windy, it's Justin Tucker, he missed the first. Then he missed another, and it's like, whoa, hold up, man. What, what's going on? Um, But... For all the for the misses that he's had, he's obviously had twenty thousand more makes, um, and they've been very memorable makes. And with Justin Tucker, like he's shown just from jump, literally from jump, because he's an undrafted rookie free agent uh, that they signed from Texas, um, and he had been clutch like from the start. The pressure was put on him from the start. Uh, people often over time um, they they overlook kickers. Uh, a lot of people can overlook kickers and just really um, undermine their value. Uh, and as Ravens fans, like, we know how valuable kickers are. We know Justin Tucker. Uh, we know Billy Kundiff. We know Matt Stover. Uh, so it's been um, it's been a little, little bit of a, a roller coaster. There's been a lot of highs with Ravens kickers. Been some lows, but a lot more highs than lows. Um, so with Justin Tucker, uh, just to have him locked up and, and for the foreseeable future, as a Baltimore Raven, um, it just it's nice to that you know that you have like a chance for three points pretty much from anywhere on the field. I, I remember um during the open practice, uh Justin Tucker, he he was trying it, man. He was trying to kick some long field goals and he was converting most of them. There were a few that he missed, but he was kicking like 60, 65 yarders, uh, and he was just going crazy with it. So I uh I love the fact that this guy, he uh, he's such a good combination of power with kicking and accuracy. Like with Matt Stover, Matt Stover was really accurate. Um, but sometimes he didn't always have the power, but Justin Tucker's like a good combination to have power. It's like Justin Tucker's like a, not necessarily some Sebastian Janikowski, but he got a big, big leg and an accurate leg. So uh, we get the best of both worlds with him. So the extension was well-deserved. Yeah, 100%. And, and you mentioned engraving the fact that you know the consistency and it's almost like the consistency that we got so used to with sam cook when, when you're watching this team and the fact that mm -hmm. you know when the ravens had to punt the ball away you were in good hands with sam cook you know he's going to pin the mm -hmm. ball back you'll be able to boot the ball really far down and now you're kind of like losing that consistency bringing a, a really good player in jordan stout but it's almost mm -hmm. like that automaticness you know automat tuck is justin tucker's thing mm -hmm. it, it's gone with sam cook but still with tucker you have him for four years i think that extension obviously very very well deserved but mm -hmm. the player who has had some contract issues with their team is roquan smith a linebacker from the chicago bears <laughs> and news yesterday comes out that he requested a trade from the chicago bears and ravens fans everywhere jumped all over it now mike clay of espn actually did put out that you know hey the team looking for some linebacker help could be this Baltimore Ravens team. And so it's a very interesting debate here in Graven because you have a team in the Ravens. That look, Roquan Smith, I, I love Roquan Smith as a player. I've been on him since the Georgia days. I think that mm. he's somebody who, again, one of the best linebackers in football right now. But mm -hmm. then the question becomes, well, they might need a little more corner, maybe another edge guy, potentially a wide receiver. And we actually have a mailbag question here from Gunny Ravens that says, with Roquan Smith asking for a trade from his current team, while not factoring in trade value or the likelihood of acquiring him, would he be a fit for the Ravens? So there, there are all these different questions about it. So in Raven, do you think that the Ravens should trade for Roquan Smith and would he be a fit in this defense? I do think he would definitely be a fit. Um, he would give you like Ravens with Patrick Queen right now. Um, there's still a, a, a couple of question marks. Uh, one of the big question marks for me, I think is with Patrick Queen, his, his tackling. Um, and that's something that has been very up and down. Uh, and it could be for a number of reasons. Um, sometimes I think it could be him overthinking or trying to do too much. 
uh, maybe thinking about what other people around him have to do uh, and not just being focused on his own task. Um, and sometimes it could just be bad technique. Um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of arm tackling. Sometimes you're trying to always go for the big hit instead of just uh, wrapping up. Um, and if you got a Roquan Smith, then it's like, oh, well, that, that problem is solved. Uh, but I, I don't think – like having a Roquan Smith would be great, um, but he is obviously – he's looking to get paid. Um, and nothing wrong with look, looking to get paid. I mean, we all looking to get paid. Who wouldn't mind extra money? Who wouldn't mind a raise and whatever they're getting paid now? Um, but with Roquan Smith, uh, if, if the Ravens were to acquire him – then what happens next? Do you keep Patrick Queen or do you move off of Patrick Queen? Because uh, the Ravens this offseason, um, they it's they are they went for Bobby Wagner. So how how are they really feeling about Patrick Queen? Um, they, then, of course, they brought back Josh Bynes again. Um, so how, do they really trust Patrick Queen uh, fully? Um, so I, I really wouldn't be surprised if they were interested in Roquan Smith, if they checked in on a Roquan Smith, because Ravens, you know, they check in on a lot of players once they come available. Um, but I just, I, I don't see a move being made um, for Roquan Smith. I feel like the Ravens, they have a lot of questions with their own players right now, especially when it comes to contracts. Um, but so I, I just, I don't see it happening. I would love if they could get him and be a nice piece. Uh, but then at the same time too, I, I'd rather that investment go to a particular position on offense. Right. And you look at, the, the talent that Roquan Smith has, like it is mm -hmm. undeniable. He would oh, be, yeah. you mentioned it, a great fit for this team. But again, there's also the question in Raven of the fact that with the Ravens having all these safeties that can play up in a box, you can move them all around the field. Do That's they true. need to keep five, six inside linebackers? Or is it mm. more, hey, you know what? They can get away with keeping four guys and really playing one inside linebacker, one safety on the field on third downs, moving, you know, these 60 B packages, someone in the dime spot. So I think in that case, you look at the edge position and, and what they're going through there with Vince Beagle tearing his Achilles, you know, wide receiver, obviously, mm. you know, veteran, no veteran there as well. And then also corner where we've seen guys like Marlon Humphrey miss time, Brandon Stevens miss time, mm -hmm. Davis be limited and Marcus Peters mm. still working his way back. You know, oh, yeah. the Ravens, it might feel like they have really one, they could make one, maybe two big, big moves here in terms of acquisitions. And maybe that's cut down and maybe that's a trade. So the question becomes for them, do they feel like Roquan Smith is that needle moving piece for that defense? And certainly on, on the field, absolutely. Like he'd be a great piece for them. Oh, but yeah. then if depth gets kind of thin somewhere else, do they have enough wiggle room? So it just, hmm. it becomes all these different things meshing into one. I, I love Roquan Smith and it's interesting. It's an interesting thing to talk about definitely, but we're going to be talking about more interesting stuff coming up here in the second segment of Locked on Ravens, talking about preseason players to watch on the offensive side of the ball. So be sure to stay tuned. We still have a ton to talk about here on Locked on Ravens. First, though, I do want to tell you a bit about Bet Online. And BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, Combat Sports, Esports, and even Golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for our sports, raising your information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. We're back here with our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Oshaker is still here with Engraven Vids. Talking Ravens football <laughs> again. The Ravens kicking off their preseason tomorrow against the Tennessee Titans, M&T Bank Stadium. It's, it's mm -hmm. exciting times here in Graven. Now, we do know that Lamar Jackson will not be playing in this preseason right. game. A couple other mm -hmm. stars. And I, look, I think that's the right approach. I, I wanted to get uh -huh. your opinion. Should the Ravens be playing their stars in this preseason or should they kind of lay off here? Lay them all the way off. Don't don't play any starters. I mean, uh, you you don't want to be like thinking scared and moving scary, anything like that. But at the same time, like last year, that was very scary. Um, so I, I I wouldn't do it. I I would just let them just take it off. Uh, and, and Harbaugh talked about the the guys with experience. They're not gonna be playing. He well, he said at least for this this Titans game. Uh, we'll see what happens moving forward. But I definitely think that um last season uh and last preseason uh, will have a big impact on the way that the ravens move uh in this preseason but uh, yeah I, I would say no to the starters playing yep I, i'm i'm the exact same mindset as you i feel like just <laughs> with, with everything that happened with jk dobbins it, it's interesting because with the with the four preseason format that they obviously switched over to three now mm -hmm. but you had like all right the starters are going to play 
three series in the first game, then a quarter in the second game, then a half in the third game, then nothing in the fourth game. So mm-hmm. I was kind of like, all right, they should do that. And I said last year they should play three series in the first game, and or a quarter in the first game, a half in the second game, and nothing in the third game. And so I was like, yeah, they probably shouldn't play their guys in the third game. John Harbaugh won in one series to get the reps, and you know what happened? Mm. happened. It's in the past. But yeah, I agree. I think that we're not going to see that. For especially the guys in the PUP that's coming back, J.K. Dobbins, you know, absolutely not. I don't think we're going to see him at all. No. You know, same thing with with all the guys who are still on the PUP list, obviously. But the mm-hmm. running back position in Graven, you know, we talked about some of those guys, and there are a lot of names to watch, especially oh, right. at this preseason game. You know, mm-hmm. Mike Davis, if he ends up getting some snaps, Tyler Beatty, the rookie, even guys like Corey Clement. I'll throw a name out here too, Justice Hill. That might be the guy I'm most interested mm-hmm. to see here. Who, who are you looking at in that positional group and saying you really want to see that guy perform well? Um, yeah, really all the names that you mentioned, uh, Mike Davis, uh, because he is essentially going to be filling in as that big bruising back for, uh, August Edwards, um, Justice Hill, because he's, man, it's tough because he's up against a lot, like a lot. They signed Mike Davis. JK just got activated off the pup list. They drafted Tyler Beatty. So that's like, that's three running backs already. And while we probably expect the Ravens to keep like four, um, it's, it's tough because it's still got Corey Clement, uh, Gus. He'll be back uh, one of these days, probably not for a while, but still. Um, so Justice Hill, he is really going to have to show like, hey, I'm I'm, I'm good. I, I can do this thing. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, to Beatty. The, the reason I'm looking forward to Beatty is just to, to see um, what he can do without a uh, starting offensive line, even though the Ravens depth, they, they got some quality depth along the offensive line, uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing Beatty. Um, and even if, if we could even see him on special teams, I know Ravens um, like Devin DuVernay, most likely going to be the kick return. I know they've messed with uh, James Prochet at punt return a little bit. So we'll see what they do there. Uh, but I would like to see Tyler Beatty on special teams too, to see if he can do something there. Um, so yeah, those, those will be the guys that I'm looking forward to uh, the most at running back. And I, I am much more confident in Graven this year in the depth they have as opposed to last year in the depth they have just because <laughs> they brought in that that mix of veterans, but also drafting a Tyler Beatty and then getting hopefully Dobbins and Edwards back for the regular season. Now, whether mm-hmm. Edwards is able to return for that, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening week one. But again, the depth that they have, they have prepared for this, much like a bunch of other positions on their roster, which has been great. But mm-hmm. let's talk about wide receivers and tight ends. Graven, I, want, I want to kind of mess, mess these two together because we have Mr. Isaiah Likely who I think yeah. can line up all over the field has been impressing in camp a ton. And I wanted mm-hmm. to ask just who you're looking at there, because obviously you see names like Rashad Bateman, who, you know, might not play a ton. He, he's, he got back to practice, but again, mm-hmm. maybe we'll see a series, maybe won't play at all. But then you have guys like James Prochet, Devin Duvernay, Tylen Wallace, who I know some people want to hear a little bit more from, but then mm-hmm. that number five wide receiver spot, Jalen Moore, Benjamin Victor, Slade Bolden, Shamar Bridges, et cetera. And then you have the tight ends, too, with Isaiah Likely kind of being the name to watch there. I mean, who are you looking forward to? And also, what have you seen in camp? And who's your favorite for number five right now in that wide receiver room? All right. As far as the, the tight ends, um, we we hear something about Isaiah Likely, like literally every single day. Um, and from having gone to the training camp and in that open practice, yeah, you heard about Isaiah Likely every single day. He was always doing something, always making a play. Um, so what I'm looking forward to seeing – uh, and this goes also applies to the wide receivers, and we'll get on those in a little bit. But for Isaiah Likely, all right, you did it in training camp. You did it in practice. What are you going to do against a comp- the competition now? What are you going to do against an opposing team? Let's see if all the, the training camp hype and the training camp, just the success that he's been having, if it can start to translate now. And we don't expect him to go off in every preseason game, but let's see if he can consistently make some plays when given uh, the opportunity. Uh, and then with the wide receivers, uh, we've been hearing so much about James Prochet standing out. Uh, we have that has been such a consistent name that we're hearing. Prochet is Prochet. That. Of course, we heard Bateman, but besides Bateman, it's, it's been a lot of Prochet. And then there's, there's been there have been Devin Duvernay early on before he got hurt. Um, so in the preseason, for whatever wide receivers play, same thing. Is it just going to be training camp hype, or is it going to translate? Um, now with Tylen Wallace. We haven't really been hearing anything uh, about him. It's been very, very quiet. Uh, now, will he be somebody that is just a baller? He just show up to game day, and that's when he shows out if given the opportunity? Uh, or will he be a little bit quiet? Because this is a big for him. 
This is this is so big for him. Reason being because the Ravens, they didn't bring in anybody at the wide receiver position. Um, so that could go a long way into him really getting a chance. Because you know, it's gonna the top three receivers we expect them to be Rashad Bateman, Prochet, and Duvernay. Um, but after that, who's it gonna be? Uh, is he gonna step into that role as sort of the fourth wide receiver? Uh, is to be determined. And Jalen Moore. Jalen Moore has been somebody who um, we've been hearing his name uh, consistently as well. Uh, so, again, ev everything now, um, now that preseason is starting, everything is about consistency. And, and something that John Harbaugh always talked about uh, during his tenure here as, a, as Ravens head coach, um, he always talked about stacking good practices. Uh, but now it, it goes from just stacking good practices to, to stacking good games. Uh, so it's important that everybody just they build off of uh, what they've been doing and practicing. And, and, and if they haven't really been doing much in practice, it's important that you maximize any opportunity that you get, because um, this is this is the, the, the toughest part now because it's, it's real. It gets real now because you you're going to get somebody else who's they trying to make it too, but on the defensive side of the ball. So they're trying to do everything that they can to stop you. Um, so as far as the guys and oh the undrafted guys, um, because one of them, uh, if you figure the Ravens are gonna keep like maybe five receivers, six, uh, I don't know about six, but I think they'll definitely keep five. But um, as far as the undrafted guys, I, I would say right now Shamar Bridges, um, because he is just he is very smooth. Um, he is like what is it, like six, six, three, six, four, but he has really good control over his body. Um, he does a good job of concentrating uh, after he makes the catch, like even with the sideline catches and whatnot. Um, he will give Lamar Jackson a, a, a bigger frame target, bigger catch radius, and, and I feel like that's exactly what the Ravens need more of. Um, so I, I think he would be the guy uh, to, to hold down that, that fifth spot. Yeah, they have options, though, and I think one of the great things about mm -hmm. that is they can maybe fit, you know, if they only keep five guys and Bridges is that guy, they can put maybe two or three of these guys on the practice squad. And Boom. that's a great thing to mm -hmm. have. You have that extra depth there, guys, who have been with the team. So I, I love that aspect of it. But, Ingraven, mm -hmm. let's talk about those big bodies up front, that offensive line. Who, who are you looking forward to on that line to watch on Thursday? Oh, man, I, I really want to see Daniel Falele. And I want to see um, his technique. I, I just want to see how smooth he can be. Or if he's just still going to continue to uh, need a lot of work. And, and he is a rookie, and it'll be his first NFL game. Um so I just I just want to see how he looks. I want to see if he can uh, really control his body, especially how massive this dude is. Like to to be bigger than Orlando Brown Jr. And Orlando Brown Jr. is a giant, but to be bigger than him, oof, man. Um, so I, I just really want to see. He he would be the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, Jawan James, Jawan James, uh, really getting the rust off because he hasn't played in really like one and a half, two years. It's been a long time for him. Uh, so to see how he looks, uh, see if he can hold his own because. Depending on how things go, his number may be called sooner rather than later. So we'll see. Um, hopefully, Ronnie Stanley can come back if healthy, um, but that's to be determined. So, uh, yeah, those, those will be the two that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, and then with Linderbaum being out, but there's going to be Patrick McCary taking the snaps to center um, or Tristan Colon. Uh, Castillo, if he's going to be taking the snaps at center, uh, I'm looking to see what the Ravens do there because that could – Hopefully it won't be, but that could be an indication of the route they may need to take if Linda Baum is out for a while. Yeah, well, that, that injury, again, the, the, the prognosis is still kind of very iffy at that point. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at, you know, McCary, we're looking at Tristan Colon. And also I'll add in the, the left guard competition is one that I love. Mm. I love that competition there. So you got Ben Powers, Van Cleveland, Tyree Phillips. I, I, my prediction is that Tyree Phillips is going to win that job. Who do, who do you have? Yeah, I, I think it will be Tyree Phillips too because – I mean, it's oh poor Ben Cleveland, man. It, it, it he had, he was off to a rough start, a really rough start with just not being able to pass the conditioning test. And we know that that conditioning test is crazy because I, I I try to do it myself. Um, so if it was up to me, uh, for me passing it, then I would have been on the uh, the PUP list for years because I tried that years ago and still ain't been able to pass it. So that thing is tough. Um, but I, I uh, so I would say yeah, Tyree Phillips would have the the leg up on him, but with Ben Powers. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Ben Powers, um, a lot of talk about him possibly being able to be the starter. And I just really, uh, I think that's, um, it's going to be another Jermaine Elmanor situation uh, with Ben Powers, in my opinion. 
Um, I think he's been being propelled as a starter uh, for them to, to to end up trading him. But again, we, we, we'll see what happens. But um, so yeah, I, I agree. I think that Ty Phillips will end up being the one uh, to hold it down at left guard. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of competition there. We'll see. But we'll head into our final break here. Coming up, we'll talk about the defensive side of the ball. Talking about players to watch in the preseason game coming up here. So be sure to stay tuned. Still a ton to talk about here on Locked On Ravens. We're back here with our final segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Osher is still here with Ingrave and Viz talking preseason football. The Ravens, they're, they're kicking off in a day here. We're, we're finally here. We finally made it in Ingrave. And I do want to start off first with a mailbag question about the preseason from Afi mm-hmm. Defoy, who says, Hello, Kevin. Do you think the rivalry can be a motivation for the players, even if it's a preseason game? Which is a very interesting question, honestly, because we know yeah. the Titans – the whole logo thing that went on with them. I mean, do you, do you think players are thinking about that when they face off in the preseason or is this just more like, Hey, let's get the reps and let's see what our guys got. And we'll go from there. Oh man. That, that, that whole logo thing. That was fun. Just the back and forth and just how it ended up coming full circle in the, in the following playoff game and whatnot. But anyway, um, no, I no guys are just trying to, uh, a lot of these players are just trying to make sure that they can make it through the preseason and still have a helmet that even has a logo on it. Uh, Cause this is going to be um, this is the end of the road for a lot of players. Uh, Cause when they get cut from a team that that could be the end of a lot of their football career. Cause not everybody gets picked up. Cause you to go from a 90 man roster to a 53 or 55 man roster, even with the practice squad included, um, there's still a lot of spots that just a lot of, a lot of players that don't get spots. So I don't really think the, uh, the rivalry will be any, real motivation for anybody. I mean, a lot of those guys aren't even playing. Some of them are not even on the team anymore. Like you got some, some of the major players in that that rivalry and the whole logo thing of Marcus Peters. He's not going to be playing. Jihad Ward, uh, he, he's not going to be playing. Cal- Calais Campbell, he's not going to be playing. So um, a lot of it just, no, nah, I, I don't I don't think the rivalry will really play any part. These guys are just trying to fight for jobs right now. Uh, just like the, a lot of the players on the Tennessee Titans. Because I don't really expect many starters to play um but yeah guys are just trying to make sure that they can finish the preseason and, and still have a logo to put on their helmets and on the back of their jersey so I don't think so right that, that, that's where I am too especially with like not a lot of the starters even playing it's like guys who mm-hmm. are maybe new to the whole thing and you know they weren't there oh, yeah. for that so mm-hmm. I think that maybe there's a little bit of a little bit of something there but I don't think it's going to be major whatsoever I think again it's just the preseason you go with what you got there but Ingrid, let's talk about the defense a little bit now who you're looking forward to watching in the preseason but let's mm. get to the defensive line first so we'll talk about defensive linemen and also outside linebackers too on the defensive front I mean is there anybody you yeah. have your eye on and really want to see perform Oh, yeah, um, because you heard Michael Pierce talk about him. Uh, you've heard a lot of different reports about him. Um, and a lot of people thought that he could have been a, a first-round pick. Uh, and they said he's – some people even felt like he was a, the best interior defensive lineman in the draft. Most people had him as number two um, behind Jordan Davis. Uh, and that would be Travis Jones. Uh, just really looking to see Travis Jones, uh, again, against competition to see that strength, to see his burst, to just really see uh, his power uh, as an interior defensive lineman because that has still been something that uh, the Ravens have been lacking, uh, interior pressure, just that uh, somebody to really be disruptive. Uh, And we don't expect anybody to come in and be Aaron Donald. I mean, that would be nice. But uh, just to really get more chaos up front, uh, because that will make life so much harder for the quarterbacks that the Ravens are going against. So I would, I'm really looking forward to Travis Jones, but also another guy, too, that I, I feel like not necessarily a lot of people are forgetting about, but it just I've heard his name off and on. Matt BK. Matt, Matt BK has been one that and he's shown us flashes here and there, um, but we just haven't seen the, the complete package yet. Uh, so Matt Abike will be somebody else that I'm looking forward to seeing because I just I envision like we obviously have the older guys like a Calais Campbell and whatnot, but uh, I just envision uh, Jones, uh, Matt Abike, the, the the young guns, don't, them being up front and them just causing causing havoc, man. Um, and that's something that I really want to see. And then you, of course, got a, a Dafe away. Uh, so I'm looking forward to just seeing this defensive line coming together. We know it's not going to all come together in the preseason, but. Um, in the preseason specifically, yeah, Travis Jones and Matt Abike for me. Yeah, and speaking of the front seven in Graven, let's just, let's just round that out. Any inside linebackers you're looking for? Me personally, I'm looking at Malik Harrison as one of those guys. 
Mm. Oh, Malik Harrison. Wow. I, I, I forget about him because he, um, yeah, they, they said that they are uh, working him at inside and outside linebacker. Um, and, and it would be nice to just see him get a role for him to figure out what his role is going to be, what he's going to be doing um, moving forward. And, and if he can just be good at, be good at that one thing um, and, and be special at that one thing. Cause a lot of times if coaches, if they like, all right, we're going to try you out here. You know what? We'll try you out there too. Then that means you don't really have a role. Um, so I would love to see Malik Harrison. I, I, I would love to see um, if him and Patrick Queen, they could be that nice little one, two punch, that one, two combo. Um, and, and Malik Harrison could make all this, uh, this Roquan Smith stuff go away. That, that, that would be something right there. Um, but yeah, that, that is a good one to, uh, to be looking out for. Yeah. There, there are a lot of players in the front seven, very talented. Again, a lot mm -hmm. of depth, we keep talking about depth this entire time. And in the secondary engraving, they, they have depth for sure. You know, cornerback, I know it's a little iffy right now with the injury safety position mm -hmm. though. You're looking at a lot of talent. Are there any guys who you have your eye on in the preseason game on Thursday that you're looking at? Mm. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if Kyle Hamilton is going to play or not. Uh, I think he probably will at least a little bit. Uh, so Kyle Hamilton, um, Geno Stone, so much competition uh, at the safety position. Uh, so did Geno Stone, um, Tony Jefferson to see if he just really is, is still that rejuvenated Tony Jefferson. Um, to me, uh, in my opinion, the Tony, and, and it, it was a sample size, uh, but at the same time with Tony Jefferson, Last year versus when he was here before, to me, last year, he looked better than when he was here before. And again, I know it's a small sample size, but he just looked rejuvenated and refreshed. He, he seemed younger. He seemed uh, quicker, too, like he had more speed to his game. Um, so just to see uh, a continuation of that, if he can continue to bring that uh, in the preseason, um, that, that's what I'm looking forward to watching. Yeah, there, there are a lot of guys that I think can make an impact in that secondary. Pepe Williams, another one who I, I'm, I'm excited to look at. He's someone a fan favorite already in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So, And then Jay Lomar Davis is able to play. I think, again, those two rookies in Davis, Pe Pepe Williams, I think will be really interesting to watch. But mm -hmm. all right, Engraven, we have a final mailbag question here from Braden Howard, who asks, looking at our schedule and roster, does this team have the potential to have a similar season to the 2019 team? It seems as hmm. if we have filled holes where that team struggled. And I mean, look, with all these guys coming back, with the additions they made in, in free agency and in the draft, I, th I think we have the potential here for a pretty good season if you're the Ravens. Yeah, they, they stay healthy. Um, yes, but hopefully not. The reason being because, yeah, the 14-2, and two, that was beautiful. That was so nice. Um, but look how it ended. Um, and, Receivers dropping balls, uh, tip passes getting intercepted. Uh, playoff game was definitely uh, it was ugly. It was very very ugly. Um, people not tackling Derrick Henry, him just breaking off these big long runs. Um, but as far as regular season, uh, yes, they they do have that that potential. Uh, as long as they stay healthy, if if Ravens can can stay healthy, then I expect them to have a lot of success uh, in the regular season. Now, now postseason. That's where um, that's where it gets even more real. At. Uh, so hopefully uh, from all the success that they can possibly have in a regular season, uh, guys will become more household names, or not even necessarily household names, but guys can just establish themselves. Uh, guys can go from being unproven to proving themselves in a the regular season. And then uh, just I feel like Ravens just need that push. They need a little extra push. Uh, to help get them over the top come playoff time. But hopefully they'll get that. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I I'm excited for them. I think that when mm -hmm. you're looking at it, might, it might not be a 14-2 and two record. Well, it won't because there are now there's more games <laughs> in the year. But, yeah. you know, it might it might not be, you know, a 15-2 and two record. But if they go, you know, 14-3, and three, I think that, you know, even you're looking at 13-4 and four potentially. This is a team that can definitely win the AFC North. They can compete mm -hmm. for the AFC Championship, go to a Super Bowl. I think, again, if you're looking at the AFC right now, that is maybe you're looking at AFC Championship game for the Ravens. And you say, hey, look, that's a great starting point. Let's go back at it next year. I think they can definitely win the Super Bowl. If you're looking at a team that has so much depth, is getting more players back, and maybe, again, they make it so that they make a move at the trade deadline. They add someone mm -hmm. on cut down day. And that can be like their final move to maybe get them over the top. But I think the roster as is, even if they don't add anyone, that is still a very competitive roster overall. But Engraven, I appreciate mm -hmm. you hopping on. Thank you so much for joining me here. I appreciate all your insight and everything that you do for the Ravens community. Tell everybody what you're doing on the, over there on your, on your YouTube channel, what you have coming up. 
Oh man, it's it's getting ready to get real crazy over there. Um, the the YouTube channel uh, is Engraven Vids. It's I N G R A V E N V I D S, uh, and we will continue to have uh, daily videos about the Ravens and just the the goings ons of the NFL. Um, and this team keep it clean, it's family friendly, so everybody is more than welcome. And that's whether you're a Ravens fan or not. Um, but Ravens fans, they get a little ex extra home cooking over there. But now nah, it's, it's 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 we have a lot of fun on it. Have a lot of fun on there. Try not to take ourselves too seriously. Try not to really take anything too seriously. Um, but I, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, I appreciate what you do. Um, thank you for your continued consistency, too. Um, so shout out to Lockdown Ravens, man. Appreciate you, Kiv. I appreciate you, too, Engraven. Thank you so much for those kind words. It, it really does mean a lot. A lot of great Ravens content out there. Be sure to check out Engraven and his YouTube channel. The link to his channel will, of course, be in the description below on YouTube. But that's all I have for you here today on Lockdown Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in. When we get back here tomorrow, I'll be previewing that preseason game week one against the Tennessee Titans. So be sure to stay tuned for that, and I will see you back here tomorrow.